Hi everyone and welcome to the third and final part of the magazine cover practice tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you guys how to add these text blurbs that I've included on the sides that give some more information about what's inside of the magazine as well as adding Adam Levine's name on top and these little blue rectangles to kind of bring attention to the text. We are going to play around with different text weights as well. So in these little blurbs, you can see each one kind of has a title and then a short description of what they're gonna talk about in this article. So we want to use this visual hierarchy when we're writing our blurbs so people know what we're talking about. And if it sounds interesting to them, they'll read on to the short descriptions. So we've left off here we added a color overlay to our GQ logo, and now we're gonna start with our first piece of text. So first, let's take a look at the text blurbs that we're going to include. There are four different ones. This one's about Adam Levine, then Zendaya, then Tom Holland, and then Chris Evans. It would be very easy to copy paste this, but I'll explain later on why this might be difficult. Back in Photoshop, this time instead of using touch type, we are going to use paragraph type. I'm gonna go over to my type tool and I'm going to click and drag a short text box to start off. I'm going to left align it because my text is right aligned right now. I'm gonna click that. And for now, I'm gonna change the color of my text to black so I can see it more easily. And right now it's just lorem ipsum text. Notice that I'm not clicking anywhere. It's still highlighted because once I start typing, this will go away. I'm gonna go over to Google Chrome and I'm gonna copy paste my first text blurb. I'll highlight it, right click and copy. I'll go to Photoshop. It looks like my text got deselected. So I'm gonna select it one more time by double clicking this T and then you can just paste it. You can hit Command V as in Victor to paste, or you can go to Edit, Paste. And if you see this plus sign, that indicates there's more text here that's hidden. So we can either pull the text box to be wider or longer, whatever you prefer. And I'm going to get rid of this hyphen because I don't like how it looks. So I'm just gonna backspace that portion and just add one space. So right now style evolution inside of Adam Levine's bold new look, it's five lines. I think I wanna make style evolution into one line. I'm going to pull this text box down first. If I move my mouse down far enough, it goes into the move tool. So I'm gonna pull it down a bit just so I have more space to work. And I'm gonna make my text wider my text box. Okay, and then I'll bring it down a little bit more. My font's also looking a little bit too big right now. It's taking up too much space. So I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna set the font size down. It's gonna seem really tiny, but we're gonna set it to four. And now I wanna start separating my lines. So style evolution after that, I think I wanna skip a line. So I'll do that. And then inside of Adam Levine's bold new look, I don't want to separate his name. I want it to be inside of, and then I'll skip a line, then Adam Levine's, and then I'll skip a line again, and bold new look will be its own line. Now I can kind of shrink this down. I prefer to add my blurbs, all of them, before I go in and make any other changes. I'm actually gonna go back into this text box and I'm gonna add some type hierarchy. So the title of this blurb is Style Evolution. I'm gonna double click back into it and I'm gonna highlight these first two words and I'm gonna set my font weight to bold. And that's gonna bring a lot more attention to the words style evolution. Even though they're the same size, this one is bringing more attention to it because it's bolder. And then I'll go to my move tool. 
Now I'm gonna make a copy of this text. And because I already have my style set, I have this in bold and this in light, I'm gonna just type instead of copy pasting. So I see the next blurb says Zendaya takes charge. I'll just highlight this part and I'll type in Zendaya takes, I'll skip to the next line, charge. I haven't decided if I wanna make this uh, more than four lines like this one, but I'll kind of decide once I type everything out. And then it says fashion film and breaking boundaries. So I will type fashion film and that's an ampersand breaking boundaries. So that almost fit into four lines. I think I'm going to pull that out a little bit more just so it does fit into the four lines. And then I'm going to move this over. I'll change all of the text alignment once I have all four of my blurbs. Now I'll make another copy of this. I'm just holding option and clicking and dragging. And I'll make my fourth, sorry, third one. Tom Holland's next chapter, Beyond the Spidey Suit and Stardom. Tom Holland's. And I'm just going to hit enter here, next chapter. And then I'll go to my third line, beyond the spidey suit and stardom. That's a long one. Beyond the spidey suit and stardom. I have to go ahead and expand my text. This changed back to bold, so I have to change it to light. I think I was using light. There we go. Okay, and then again, I'll worry about my text alignment later. And I'll add one more blurb. This last one is Chris Evans, The Superhero's Guide to Staying Grounded. Chris. Evans, and then here, the super heroes, skipping a line, guide to skipping a line, staying grounded. And I'll make it a little bit wider. So there are my four blurbs, one, two, three, four. Now I need to start organizing my information. So I'm gonna decide where do I want to put this stuff? Maybe I'll put this on the left side closest to Adam. We read left to right and up to down. So this is more likely where the reader is going to go first. So I'm going to keep this left aligned and then I'm going to choose what I want to put underneath it that's going to fit well. I think I'll do the Zendaya one. And I'm going to try to keep them right on the same column. And that looks about right. You wanna make sure you're using these smart guides, those are the pink lines that pop up, to your advantage. Okay, and I'll keep it right here. And then these two, I'm going to right align them. These right now are left aligned. I'm going to scroll down in my properties panel to paragraph and I'm going to write a line and I'll do the same for this one. Click it, write a line. And I think I'll put it up here and the Chris Evan ones underneath it. You don't want them to be too symmetrical either. You want to make it a little bit more interesting. And then on top, I want to add his name. So I want to add Adam Levine. Now, because this is only two words, Adam Levine, I'm going to use touch type. So I'll go to my type tool, click, and I'll type Adam Levine. Now I want this to have more attention because he's on the cover, it's his name. So I'm going to highlight my text. I'm going to change my weight to a bold and I will make the font bigger. So I'll bring it up to an eight point font. And I just realized that the font 
is not the same one I've been using, you wanna make sure you're consistent. So here I was using Helvetica New, and for some reason here it switched to Myriad Pro. So I'm gonna switch back over to Helvetica New. And it's already on Bolt. So then I'll take my Move Tool, and I'm gonna place it right about here. I still want it to be vertically aligned with this text. Now, for our second to last part, we're going to add blue rectangles to bring attention to these blurbs. This part's gonna be super easy. I want to take this color, if you guys remember, I saved it to my swatches, so I should have that most recently used color there. I'm gonna to go to my rectangle tool. This is one of many shape tools. You can tap U on your keyboard to access it. And if you don't see a rectangle, just right click this tool until you see specifically the rectangle tool. You wanna to set your stroke to none. We do not want an outline on our rectangle. Then for fill, we will set it to this blue. You can go ahead and just click your recently used color. You should see that there. And the stroke weight doesn't matter because there is no stroke on it and everything else we're keeping the same. Now I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna add my first rectangle over here. I'm gonna start outside of my canvas just a little bit and I'm gonna click and drag a blue rectangle from the top of the text to the bottom of the text and you'll see that it'll fill with blue. Then I'll go to my move tool. And you can already see that that's bringing way more attention to this blurb. This one is also four lines, so I'm just gonna copy paste this rectangle down here. I'm gonna hold option and I'm gonna copy paste it and bring it down there. Then for this side, these are also, this one's four lines, so I'm just gonna copy paste that over as well. Try to match the width like that. And this one's five lines. I am gonna have to make it bigger, but that's okay. I'll copy paste, oops. So something a little bit odd is happening. Every time I'm trying to copy this rectangle over, it's copying my watermark. The reason is because my watermark layer is on top of my rectangle layer. So just for the time being, I'm going to hide the watermark and I'm gonna try that one more time. And you should be able to comfortably bring your rectangle layer copy up. Now I need to make this one a little taller. So I will go to Edit Free Transform or Command T and I'm just gonna pull it this way. Last but not least, I wanna add one right on top of the words Adam Levine. So I'll copy that again. I'm gonna free transform it again. And now I'm gonna rotate it. If you hold shift, it allows you to rotate in perfect 15 degree angles. And I want it to be perfectly horizontal like so. Again, just hold shift to do that. Then I'm going to pull it up. If you need your rectangle to be in a really specific place, you can use your arrows to drag it up or down. And I'm going to make it longer this way, which means I'm gonna temporarily unlink my width to height ratio. So I'm gonna just click this little chain link, pull this here, and always make sure to click that again and confirm. Last but not least, I wanna move this shoot for the stars text because it's a little too obvious right now. You can see that in my sample, I brought it down and I made it a bit bigger and it just looks like it's positioned better on my canvas. So I'm gonna do that. We already made it into a smart object, so it's only one layer. I'm just gonna bring it down to about here and I'm gonna free transform it and make it just a tad bigger. Make sure your ratio link is turned on, 
Otherwise, you're accidentally going to stretch your text out like this and you do not want that to happen. So when you free transform, make sure this is on. Then you can free transform. And I'll bring it down to about here and then check mark to confirm. And don't forget to bring your watermark back because I hit it, made it visible one more time. Once you are at this point, you are officially done with your first magazine cover practice design. And next time you guys will be making your very own custom magazine cover based on whoever you'd like for whatever magazine you'd like. Have fun, good luck, and I hope you enjoyed these tutorials. Thanks.